Well, just in terms of digital technology, the cell phone is becoming more and more the screen of choice, uh, more than the laptop, uh, more than more than the you know the, the desktop computer. Certainly, I mean, people are even reading books, articles uh, on their cell phones. That 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 screen, you know, this big is is becoming more and more the pathway. Email, in fact, is is slipping as a share of young people's communication time uh, and it's slipping to texting and texting which is you know the, the, the handheld uh, it keeps going up and up and up back a year ago in October 2008 Nielsen counted about 1743 text messages a month by teens with with a handheld device a mobile device of some kind three months later that had gone up to 2272 now, just last month, I saw that Nielsen counted 2,900 per month. And, and there's still about 200, 300 phone calls uh, per month. And you'll find more and more teenagers in the United States will say that the instrument of social contact now is the cell phone. It's not the landline. It's not, you know, meeting and face-to-face. -face. It, is, it is the cell phone. So. Uh, when you look at the, the importance of the mobile device in, in young people's lives, it keeps going up. Now, for the rest of the world, I think you'll see the same pattern uh, taking place in, in the rest of the world. I don't know what the rates of adoption are. I don't know sales figures and, and, and surveys, and a lot of survey data just doesn't exist for that worldwide. Uh, we can get a lot of European data, North American data, and that certainly goes along, then European data that goes along from what I've seen. Some surveys in the UK, for instance, do show that, that cell phones are, are spreading and, and becoming, again, a more versatile tool. I saw an article in the Wall Street Journal uh, several months back about how cell phones are being looked at now as a primary advertising medium. This is the way you reach people now better than TV, <laughs> better than uh, uh, better than radio, uh, cell phones. So I think that we will see that increasingly take place and the reason is the mobility of it. You can catch people anywhere. You can't do that with a television. You can't do that with a radio even. Uh, with a cell phone you, you, can, you can get all times a day and, and you can leave messages text messages for them. They don't have to watch the commercial. When Obama announced his vice presidential candidate, you, you remember how. It's by a text message. And the thing is, if you weren't on, well, you didn't miss it because when you flipped open your cell phone, the message was there waiting for you. So those, those are the advantages of the, of the mobile device that are spreading its adoption. Well, the disadvantages of the cell phone, uh, many people wouldn't regard as disadvantages. Uh, some people might regard that 24-7 contact as a great big leash, a collar around your neck. You can't get away. You can't disappear. That text message is waiting for you whether you're on or not. And this is one thing that has affected uh, young people's sense of their social life and that is that with digital technology young people can communicate with each other all the time anywhere it's not just in their playgrounds or classrooms or at the mall anymore they can conduct a social life in the back of their parents car when they're up in the Georgia mountains they can conduct their social life in bed at midnight. 25 years ago, if your parents said, you're acting up, go to your room, you're grounded. That, that meant isolation, and you're going to sit and reflect upon your bad behavior for a while. Today, go to your room, you're grounded. No, the, the room is a command center. It's, it's a social hub. It's where they network. They have some, some of them have a more vibrant social life in their bedrooms upstairs in their house than they do when they're out in the school bus or on the, on the schoolyard. Um, now, again, for young people, that's an advantage. I mean, I can go see what pictures are going up anytime. I can go find out what, you know, 
Biff said to Betty this morning in the cafeteria, and it's going all around everywhere. Uh, I regard that as a, as a regrettable circumstance. Uh, that there is no limit to social life means that 15-year-olds can tap into 15-year-olds at all times of the day. And the adult voices that they used to have to be exposed to, not listen to, but just be exposed to, it's, it's, uh, it's finding the walls higher and thicker into the youth world. Youth consciousness, youth culture, youth stuff passes all the time. And youth culture is, for the most part, anti-intellectual. It's adolescent in the pejorative sense. Because adolescents are adolescents. They're just natural. Why should an adolescent care about what Winston Churchill said on the radio in 1939? It's long ago. Who cares? Why, 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 why does, uh, you know, a march on Washington, uh, you know, the Lincoln Memorial steps in the summer of 1963, who cares what happened then? The Cold War. It's ancient history. I live my life. It's me. It's today. It's me and my friends. I go on YouTube. You know the motto of YouTube? It's right up there on the website. Broadcast yourself. Well, it's my life, my friends. It's all immediate. Social life all the time. That's unhealthy. It's not conducive to growing up. And I have had some conversations with, uh, with, with foreigners. I did a radio show in Bogota, Colombia uh, a few months back. And one thing they said was, you criticize Facebook as just being social juvenile stuff for the most part. In Colombia, people, especially young people, use Facebook as an organizing tool they coordinate demonstrations. They pass information about what the government is up to. They organize boycotts. It's, a, it's an instrument of communication for civic purposes. And I said, that's wonderful. And they said, why doesn't that happen in the United States? And I said, well, it has been a little bit in, in the United States, and certainly the potential is there. But you have to talk about differing social and political circumstances in the countries. In, in a South American country, you may find the run-up to election, to an, a, a national election, to be a worrisome, anxiety-ridden thing. It could mean the whole government is going to topple. There could be military forces uh, involved. We don't have to worry about that in the United States. We have the longest-running government on Earth. We have elections. No one thinks like there's going to be a oh, complete toppling of the entire system. Uh, tax rates aren't going to go from 40% up to 80%. That's not going to happen. So young people have less, less reason to worry about what the government is doing, what elections mean, and so why, why use Facebook for that? We had really high voting rates in the early 70s. We had a lot of campus demonstrations, a lot of social and civic uh, activism going on. Why? Well, one reason was we had a draft. We don't have a draft today. That circumstance isn't putting pressure on young people to pay attention, to read the newspaper, to know what Congress is voting on, and to use digital tools to spread that around. Uh, we don't have tanks at our border pointing at us. We never think about being invaded. We don't think about bombs going off. We went absolutely crazy over 9-11. We had the Patriot Act, Homeland Security. We had concrete, you know, walls, bunkers going up everywhere, airport security. Everything changed. And it had to change, uh, but I certainly believe, and many others did, starting with Daniel Patrick Moynihan, that this was way, way overdone. All the barricades, all of the heightened security, it, it, it really was a loss of perspective. And people in other nations you know, saw, you, you Americans, you're so pampered. You've got it so good. You take things for granted. You, and what happens when people have it so good? They get complacent. And they're, they become soft and they become narcissistic, and, and they become interested in trivial things. 
And one of the trivialities is to raise your social circumstance, your social life, your friends, your boyfriends and girlfriends, your adolescent romance is far beyond their due. And again, that's the natural disposition of young people. What that limit on social life did 30 years ago, when you went home at 6 o'clock and all you had was a landline, as it's now called, to talk to one person, that limit really did give to young people an exposure to serious things.